some updates on docs.microsoft.com and uh, some activities um, uh, with the community who will share that. And then we'll have some QA at the end. Um, okay, so let's get started. Alan. Hi, Mona. Uh, really quick, I can't see the slides changing. Is anyone else able to see the slides changing? Uh, uh, yes, I think we, we are in the second slide already. Oh, OK. Um, can you see it? Sure. I can't see the slide changes, but I think I Let already have go. the slides over here. So we could just go based on that. Are you on my intro slide? Uh, yes, this All one right. is the intro. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So hi, my name is Alan Yu, and I'm a program manager on the SQL Server Tools team. I help deliver features for SSMS, SQL Operation Studio, and many of our command line tools. If you would like to reach out to me, feel free to email me at alanyu at microsoft.com or tweet at alanyusql. Uh, next slide, please. Sure. So let me start off with some background about SQL Server. Once upon a time, SQL Server had been happy living in the Windows environment for over 25 years. Even as some users moved away from Windows, there wasn't any plans about moving cross-platform, and this also applied to our tools. Mac shops would simply need to at least have one old Windows computer lying around to connect to SMS to run queries against SQL Server. However, this was all about to change. Next slide, please. With a penguin or otherwise a symbol for Linux. So with the release of SQL Server 2017, SQL Server is now available on not only Linux, but also containers like Docker. This was a huge move as it not only showed a shift in our priorities, but also a massive culture change where Microsoft was embracing cross-platform development and open source projects. This event made the SQL Tools team rethink our strategy as well. Now, we were invest now we were vested in bringing our tools cross-platform and open source. However, SSMS and SSDT are huge legacy code bases, and the amount of engineering effort to bring these tools cross-platform would take hundreds of engineers when we only had less than 10. So we took a look at what other tools are out there and came across how loved VS Code was and how it was a lightweight alternative to Visual Studio. Thus, we worked with the Visual Studio team to create our cross-platform lightweight tool, SQL Operation Studio. Next slide, please. SQL Operation Studio is the main cross-platform and open source GUI tool to run T-SQL queries on your SQL Server instance. Now, Mac and Linux shops no longer needed that dusty PC to run a simple T-SQL query as now they can interact with and host SQL Server on their own environment. In addition, creating a new tool gave us a massive opportunity to modernize the tool compared to the SSMS experience, which used very old UX practices. One of the most requested features for SSMS is supporting dark mode, and we get that for free by forking VS Code. We also provide awesome dashboards to help DBAs monitor their servers and data databases, and provide complete customizability with a variety of user settings. We also recently introduced extensions through the extension marketplace to allow users to build their own extensions, share it with the community, and download only the features they need instead of getting a massive install packaged with everything like SSMS. Although we currently don't have feature parity with SSMS, we found out that 80% of users generally use a tool like SSMS for writing and executing T-SQL queries. We will include features such as SQL Agent, Profiler, and Import Wizard through extensions we create or with help from the community. Which brings me to my next point. Now that as a company and as a team we have embraced open source, we are going all in. We moved all our engineering work to the public branch so now anyone can see what our engineers are working on and what code has been checked in for each of our milestones. In addition, all issues are transparently shared with the community so they can see when an issue is prioritized or moved to a backlog. We also use a voting feature so that the community can tell us what features we should be prioritizing by giving us a thumbs up or thumbs down for each issue. 
Even further, one project I am working on is bringing SQL Agent to SQL Operation Studio. Now, for those of you who have used SQL Agent, you know it has very clunky UI, but it's still an incredibly useful tool. So we have experimented with open design, which means we put all our mockups and screens in front of the community so that they can give us feedback on things such as what columns should appear or whether we should prioritize a monitoring or configuring jobs first. It's still a learning process, but this is just one way we are truly embracing open source. Going back to the extensions marketplace I mentioned earlier, we work with community members like MVPs, and in, in the March release, we released an extension called SP, who is active, which is created by Adam Mechanic, for those of you who, who know him. This is our vision for this open source tool, where we can have complete transparency with the community and build a collaboration story with the developers and DBAs uh, in the community who want to contribute to this project. This is something we are working on across all our tools. Check out MS SQL CLI if you want to see how we are bringing cross-platform and open source experiences to our command line tools. But to go back to SQL Operation Studio, this is a wonderful project that is almost entirely community driven, and we are so grateful for your help with localization. Localization is very important to us, and the work you all do is something you should all be proud of. Next slide, please. If you want to learn more about SQL Operation Studio, here are some links you can check out. If you would like to download SQL Operation Studio, please check out our download page. Uh, definitely check out our GitHub repo to see our open source collaboration in action. If you run into any issues or would like to see any specific features, report these issues and give feedback on our GitHub issues page. And then be sure to follow us on Twitter for any latest updates, such as our uh, release that we sent out yesterday. And we have some really exciting announcements coming up, including general availability announcement in a couple of months. So we would love for you to be a part of our community. Please share the word. And that concludes my talk. Um, if, is there time for a very small demo of the tool? Sure, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Anna. Now let me take over presenter. Or no, I can share my screen. All right, cool. Can everyone see this okay? Um, yes. Yep. Cool. So currently I'm in SQL Operations Studio. And right away, if you want to use the most basic function, you simply just need to connect to your server here. So you can see right here, this is an experience that you may be already familiar with if you have used SQL uh, SSMS. Um, you could connect to your server, and it looks like I'm already connected to here. But simply, you would just either click on here, or you could connect to a new server uh, using this connection dialog. And let's say that I want to connect to my local host and connect to the master database. So I connect to it. And normally, if you want to, in terms of the experience with SSMS, you don't really have that kind of dashboard you saw there. You would simply need to uh, get select the database here, go to a very popular database called AdventureWorks, and run new query. Um, and then you could type your query here. And then you get the basic intelligence that you would see in SSMS. However, one of the features that kind of make SQL Operation, stand, uh, Operation Studio stand out is that now you have this sense of managing dashboard. And for someone that doesn't want to continuously write uh, T-SQL queries just to look up a daily task, you can now create these insight widgets, such as this database size widget. And this is all created by using uh, T-SQL. So you can actually see what the query is powering this Insight widget. So this is one um, feature that uh, that we allow DBAs and developers to quickly uh, monitor their servers or databases. And something that is new in the most recent release, which was released yesterday, is that we finally added extensions through the extension marketplace. So right here is where you would see all your different servers and possible server groups you can set up. But if you click here, uh, you can actually see 
different extensions here. Normally, these three extensions that you see here would show up in recommended extensions for discoverability, but I already have them all installed here. So in order to actually see the extension in action, you just go back to your uh, Manage Dashboard, and you can see right here, so you can see SQL Agents, which is a feature um, that isn't quite lighted up uh, yet. We still need to uh, iterate on this feature, but this one's a little bit more complete. This tells you things such as DB space usage, weight count. And what's really nice is that we're trying to make it a lot easier for the community to create their own extensions and then host it in the marketplace. So uh, definitely this community collaboration story is something that we want to continue to build towards as we prepare for general availability. And yes, this is just a very quick run through of what SQL Operation Studio looks like. Uh, feel free to contact me if you would like to learn more about our tool. But okay. thank you for your time. I'll hand it off to Mona. Yeah, thank you so much, Alan. It's very informative. Thank you. So let me take over. Okay, so um, let's talk about the community localization for SQL Ops. So um, we opened the project, the software project for community contribution on March 14th, and we advertise uh, the project for both software and content contribution. So um, if I, if, and I have uh, created a page on GitHub, um, so if we take a look at that, um, oh, okay, let me share, sorry. Um, so let me share. Can you see my screen? It's loading. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nope, something happened. No? Oh, okay. Let me try again. Mona got got an error again. Okay, yeah, let me try to share again. Can you see now? No. It's, it's loading. Here it says you can rejoin the application because the presenter has left. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. Mona, oh, try to uh, rejoin. Oh, Maybe okay. Rejoin. Okay. Yeah, sure, let me help. try to rejoin. Or maybe your resolution, your desktop resolution is too high for for the for sharing. Let 
let me try one more time. Yeah, I'm not able to share. Uh, that's okay. Uh, maybe Koi, when he demo, we can go over the GitHub page and um, I can go back to the slides right now. Uh, Let me see if we can share the GitHub page and then you can talk now. Give me a second. Can everyone see my screen? It's loading. Yes. Yeah, I see it. I got it. Oh, okay, good. So I'm going to um, show the GitHub page. Um, so Mona, just tell me which page you want to uh, show. It's the SQL Ops uh, team page. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this page has information on how to contribute to both software and content. Um, <clears throat> and um, it also has some link um, about how to sign in and join the new community platform, localization platform. And I also added the link because we hear this feedback all the time. It would be great if we have some context during localization. So I added a, a link to the screenshot in Docs. That will give some idea about how the strings will be displayed in the actual product. And um, we also give some guidelines on um, how to request a new language. Uh, if we have enough requests um, asking to add a new language, we will uh, please submit the request to the product team GitHub and we will triage and um, there is a good chance that we can add that. And it also has a link to the core, um, uh, core repo on the GitHub page. Um, okay, so can I? That's it, Koi. Thank you. Um, let me take over. Uh, yes, I added the link in the slides, Bruno. You, you will have those. Um, so let me go over. You're very welcome. Yeah, so the link is here, Bruno. It's um, aka.ms uh, SQL Ops Studio Loc. And um, um, it would be great if the community can contribute to both software and content. We would like to treat that as one project. And for now, we have 10 languages that are open for contribution. And, um, and I put um, a, bullet, a bullet point about the context. And, and we would like to hear from you if pointing to the screenshot in docs, it's it's helpful or um, it, it didn't help much to give the context. It would be great to hear back from the community. And um, so here is I'm sharing the current status. Um, Koi, would you like to talk about this or would you like to cover the new platform first and then we can go to the status? Okay, yeah, let's, let's co uh, cover the platform and then we, um, that okay. would explain the status. Sure. Okay, so let me move forward. Um, and um, so here is some background information about the new Microsoft localization community platform. You can access it directly uh, through this link. And um, it provides the same experience, um, the collaborative environment for community to contribute. We do run it through uh, translation memory and machine translation. Um, will be provided a suggestion. And um, sim similar experience to what we have with TransFX, so a community can translate and they can also vote. And we call it for the new platform, um, we call it like, but it's pretty much the same idea about voting. And uh, yes, so um, 
I put the link to the community in here. Um, so one thing I would like to highlight is uh, your, your voting and likes are as important as translation because we find out that uh, there are situations where we have lots of strengths that our um, community provide translation, but unless, unless we have a certain number of votes, the translation doesn't become final. So we do appreciate, you know, like your votes and like. Um, and Koi will talk more into details about that. And if you have any feedback about the new platform or the workflow, or you have any suggestion, please feel free to submit the feedback on tech community. And I added the link to Cloud and Enterprise International um, space. So let me hand that over to Koi. Um, he will walk us through the new platform. Thank you, Mona. Thank um, you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Khoi Fem, uh, one of the PM from uh, C uh, Cloud and Enterprise International. So I'm going to give a demo of a um, new and um, um, latest Microsoft uh, localization community platform. So let me share you my screen. Okay. Can any can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um so as the um, the, the link you saw in um, on the deck, so you go to um go to AK um the um the uh, URL to the new um localization community platform is aka.ms slash log community. The first time you um go to the page, this is the, the main page you see about the platform so uh, and then um and then you have to uh, sign in so i'm i'm going through um i'm using um i'm um, using a, a brand new account that hasn't joined the platform to show you um, how to join the platform so, so yesterday i already used two of them um Microsoft. So um, um, you need a Microsoft account uh, to be able to join. Um, so I'll use the one of my Microsoft account is live.com. So. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. This is the account I already joined. So it doesn't go through the sign up. So let me try another account. I'm going through my Microsoft account, my MS, now look. Okay. Um, MS and now look, Hotmail, All right. Ah, I'm sorry. This one also I also already joy. I think I run out of the Microsoft account. So Microsoft account we have Hotmail, Outlook, uh, Live. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use. Uh, my son account. Okay, good. So um so the first time so since um my son account he hasn't joined the platform. So um this is um the screen that you are going to um it's going to ask you to get permission to uh, access your email address and so it could sign in. So um it um it will pull in uh all pull of the information from your um Microsoft account, so including your first name, last name and, and then it does use for use for the display name and then um and then it show your uh, uh Microsoft address. For organization field, it's optional um, 
um, so my son is not Microsoft, so I put as no. Um, um, so since most of, um, unless you get an invitation code from Microsoft, otherwise you keep it as no, no as a default, and select the language. And it's important to um, um, to uh, select the correct language here. The, um, please use the con the language that you are going to contribute later. So for now, the platform only support uh, one per language per account. So um, for this demo, I'm going to select French as the select language for this account. And I click agree on term on term and up a service and sign up. And then you need to agree on the contribution license agreement and, and done. Now you are in the platform. And um, so um, earlier I select French uh, as the, my uh, contribution language, and and it will um, it will have, um, so when you are in the platform, it only show the string that available to for French contribution. Um, 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 we um, we got the feedback on on support um, having the account on multiple languages. We will look into that, and then hopefully we can have that in the future uh, version. So um, once you sign in, um, so um, also the, in the platform we have three projects. We have um, um, two SQLs from Mona, and then we have Microsoft Library Manager, for, uh, one of the VS tools um, project. But um, um, Microsoft Library Manager, the string already fully translated, so you don't see uh, the project here. So these are the two projects that that's, we still um, have string that uh, need translation. So you, I'm going to select SQL to on Linux and apply. So on on the right here, you can filter the string, um, all the string, um, including new and then already votes, or you can filter the string that already has the votes. So basically, um, you can that if you um, like to go through uh, all the community contribution, then you can filter the string that already have the votes. Um, for this um, uh, for this string, uh, the string is um, uh, estimate rewrites. Uh, so, um, so it's already, uh, as you can see, that community already translate. Um, we have three community uh, suggestions, and then this is the machine translation. So as Mona mentioned um, e, e, um, earlier, so all uh, we have um, empty connected to the platform. So all the string that um, upload into the platform will have um, um, a machine translation suggestion, and you can um, it will be identified with a robot icon um, at the beginning of the string. So um, if machine translation string good enough, then you can vote for that. Uh, or you can contribute your own translation, and then you can see that we have three uh, community translation. So if you like one of this, and you can like, for example, if you like the first one, and then you can vote for that. Um, we are setting up um, each string require uh, three la three votes for as before it become a final. So this one is almost there. Uh, we just need one more vote. Um, if if the translation good enough. Then and vote for that, and then when it's reached three line, it will go to the final um, translation. And and so so for each panel, you can see it, it will show up ten string, or unless it it reach uh, it it is or uh, have less um, than ten string, then you you see less. But normally you see ten strings uh, on on each panel, and uh, you can go through each of them. Um, and uh, when you reach that, you can go click next, and it will give you another ten strings. Uh, and then you can select other project, and then also it will it will sh um, push you ten uh, ten string uh, from from uh, from um, for this one is SQL tools on Linux. So um, so I want um, would like to talk about the. Um, the, the how the string um, uh, are vo um, um, get to the how the translation um, become final in in the product. So as Mona showed earlier, the dashboard. So this one. So as you can see, uh, this is the status of, of SQLs, um, the localization status for SQL uh, Operation Studio. Um, 
you can see um, each in each language we have three uh, color: uh, green, yellow, and and red. Uh, the green one showing that we have the string, uh, we have the translated string. So those are the string that reach three volt and be, so become final. And um, the yellow one is showing the 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 status of the string that already got some suggestion but hasn't reached the um, the 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 threshold vote which uh, which is three. Um, and the red one is the new string that we haven't got any translation. Um, so you can see on this one, um, um, Japanese and Portuguese are pretty good. So we got all all the string already got some human translation, and Brazilian got uh, almost 25 um, um, uh, percent of string in the final translation. Um, the rest just need more vote. Um, um, so yellow is um, string can see, uh, included string for one or two votes um, or less than three votes. Um, so other languages, some languages are also pretty good too, like Italian, French, German. Um, so um, so besides um, um, contribute um, a new translation, please vote. Please vote for other. Um, if you're um, in rush, um, you have five, ten minutes. Um, I recommend it do the voting. It would, would be faster. Um, uh, so filter out all the strings that require votes. And, and, and vote for um, vote for for community contributions. Um, and um, on the right hand side, here's the table of of, of the all um, the list of contributors who has made um, suggestion um, like the, the 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 strings, and then the committed. So, um, so uh, let me go through suggestion. Is when if you um, made a um, suggestion, then it show here as the number of words you have suggest. Uh, like is you vote for someone else, and committed is your suggestion has um, has met to the final. So as you can see here, um, uh, Masayuki San has made a lot of suggestion and vote, uh, but unfortunately his suggest, um, uh, suggestion need more vote. So 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 it, um, so um, so the committed final translation can um, can go um, the, the translation can go to the final translation. Um, and, and the, the table here is basically showing the same status um, as the, 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 the bar here. Uh, it just show and give us the numbers. So let's, let me go back to the... So um, um, we have um, um, we have instruction how to contribute to software. So you can go here and um, then and then see. Um, I have um, a guideline how to sign up and then contribute into the new platform. So um, for for the project in Transifex, that um, we um, we have migrated um, SQL to our Linux to the new platform. Um, so last night I I, I put the uh, SQL to on Linux into the private mode in Transifex, and 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 then it's now it's live in our new platform. Eventually we will um, uh, migrate all the uh, project that um, uh, or that were in um, Transifex uh, to our new platform, um, and 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 all the contribution that made in Transifex will be recorded and will show be shown in the in in, in our dashboard so nothing is um, lost in Transifex. So um that's it for the de demo. Um do you have any question? Uh Koi, I think there uh there is questions from from my friends from Korea. Uh they ask can can we change or see the suggestion that they submitted? Right. Um so um uh, for for this version um we um don't have it. Um so we um got a feedback that um so we uh, have create a, a, a feature request um to the platform development team. So um we um Hopefully, we have the the new feature um, soon that allow a contributor to 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 look at um, uh, his or her own suggestion and 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 are, are really corrected or just want to review um, the the translation. So yes, it will be in the new uh, in the future in the new uh, in the later versions. 
So I see an question. I also wanted to add the same. Okay, so that's also question for um, the answer for joint. Uh, you're welcome. So um, so um, um, please um, give us feedback on the platform. What and any feature that you'd like to see? Um, um, please do not hesitate to um, uh, put, 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 give, give your phone feedback in the tech community uh, website. So then um, uh, we will triage it and 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 push it to the new feature uh, to push the feature into the new uh, later versions. Thank you, Koi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, let me take over. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. So I will hand that over to Daniel to talk about the VS Code status. Okay. So very quick. Uh, thank you for contributing. Uh, it's amazing that uh, we keep the momentum for VS Code. That we have a uh, like uh, very good uh, active contribution uh, from community. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, last uh, release, last month's release, we had uh, over 100 contributors, and uh, tomorrow is uh, end game day for March update. So we are going to close uh, this very soon. And uh, for the project facts, so the project volume basically uh, grows uh, quick. So I remember we had uh, 4,000 streams in the beginning of this project. Now we have 5,000 streams. Also, everything is growing uh, very good. Uh, one more thing to call out is that uh, for this four community contributed uh, language, we now release as language pack. They were uh, only in Insider build uh, before. Now, basically, every uh, international uh, user can use their uh, preferred language if available in language pack. Uh, I believe more language will come because uh, we, uh, I think uh, Polish and Dutch, uh, they have a, a better contribution rate now. Also, everybody. Uh, can release their own language pack. We have we share the guide uh, linked here in the slide. I think that's all. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. So um, I will go over SQL tools on Linux very quickly. Um, just as um, Koi mentioned, we migrated the project from TransFX to the new Microsoft localization platform. So we'll have a consistent experience for a community member that contribute to SQL projects. They don't have to go to two different platform. And um, there wasn't much going on on the SQL tools on Linux for some time, uh, but we still need help with Russian translation. So we're close to 100% for all language except Russian. We still need um, uh, help from the community. So. If you can uh, promote it for us or contribute, that would be awesome. And uh, Andy, I'll do okay. it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so I have two slides. I'm going to walk through them fairly quickly, try to get you guys out of here. I know it's getting late. Um, so one of the things that you might have seen uh, gone through our social channels is these things we call docathons, a.k.a. the hackadocs. Basically what it is, is an opportunity for anyone that's going through the documentation, especially the international documentations, 
and they see a mistake or they see an area where they can improve, you have that, that ability within Docs. There's an edit function that allows you to um, go into the document itself, make the improvements, and then you get credit for that. You come out as one of the contributors inside Docs. So it's a really cool function, and the way that it works is because Docs is an um, it's an open source platform. It's an op everything is stored within GitHub. So all of our documentation is public for you to see, for you to change, and for you to improve. We've sent out a bunch of communications during social. You might have seen them come across. Uh, we have a couple of docs within our wiki on how to start, how to contribute, how to join. So all these instructions are there for you to um, go through and look. But it doesn't stop you from going directly into docs and doing the edit. It's fairly easy. If you're familiar with GitHub, you're going to see the document. You do the improvements. You submit a pull request, and there you go. And everything gets submitted. So uh, I encourage you guys to go in there. And as we spoke earlier about the uh, SQL Ops Studio, that documentation is there as well. So if you're looking at something into the product and you're doing the OSS uh, translations, and you have something to query, you can go to the documentation and have that ability to change or update or, or review anything that's there. So next slide. And a really quick update. So as you've heard us speak uh, through this uh, call this morning, we've opened up a forum within Tech Community. This is a really good place for you guys to come back and ask us or give us feedback. For example, if you're using the, the new uh, localization platform, if you're using uh, some of the products and you have questions or you see something that's co incorrectly translated in the product and you have an additional question, I really encourage you guys to go there. It's an open forum. We can exchange ideas. Uh, we have most everybody in the team member looking at this stuff daily so we can answer and interact with you. Last thing I want to say, aside from thank you, a big thank you for all the work that you guys do, both in software and content, uh, I want to thank the people that were able to visit our booth during the MVP Summit. Unfortunately, I was there, but my teammates were there, and we got to see a bunch of you guys took a lot of cool pictures. Uh, we were able to interact during social. Um, so thank you for that, and uh, you know we'll see you at the next big event. Mona? Thank you, Andy. Mm -hmm. So that resumed the call. So any questions, feedback? No. So I hope you find this um, informative, and um, like you will get a chance to try the new platform and participate in. Thank you so much. Okay, so. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Mona. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. -bye. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Too.